Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting, weekly meeting. We are the 16th of May 2023. Today, around the table, we got myself, Damien Duportel, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waits, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, and Kevin is not there. Let me clean up. Let's get started with the announcement. So the weekly, the the weekly version of Jenkins 2.405 has been released successfully. Um, I saw the change log was published, Mark, is that correct? Correct. And the container image I verified, you published and I verified, so very pleased with that. So the the new process with creating a tag work as expected. It's picked in the upcoming five minutes. Uh, I only made a minor mistake on the Linux builds that has been fixed. Uh, thanks for the review. So next weekly should work properly. So the next step um, with new system. So since we have the release documentation updated, the next step will be uh, us infrastructure person to communicate with the security team to update their documentation so they can do the same and they know the prerequisites. Next time they will have to issue a security advisory on a core version. And we need to start the discussion or actions related to Alex Brandes' question about should we add the release GitHub team as a maintainer of the Jenkins CI Docker controller image, so they should be able to create tag. That is question. I don't know the answer, but we have to start discussing the pros and cons of this one and find a solution because that's obvious that the team need right access to the repository or need a way to issue the tag when the release is, is finished. That could be through automation, that could be through numerous elements. Um, but we got the first step. Uh, why uh, am I mentioning this during the infrastructure SIG meeting? It's because for us infrastructure, we, we kept having issues with the image being rebuilt and published, changing the checksum. And that impacts us in our usages for CI Jenkins IO, trusted and cert and release CI, four of our five controllers, six controllers, but also it impacts us in terms of uh, a supply chain security. So now that we build a tag, we can start smart thing. I remember Hervé asking for um, SBOM uh, capability. So publishing the SBOM of a given build. Now that one has set the ground for starting working for real on this one. It's ready to go. So anyone interested in contributing that to the Jenkins controller image can get started. Is there anything specific to with that weekly release, Mark? No, it, we've we've still got a few items on the checklist that need to be run, but it looks looks like it's all going to be just fine. Okay. Uh, so that means we are ready to deploy that uh that weekly core release to our systems for weekly ci jenkins ion and for ci mm -hmm. uh second announcement today we had a security advisory that went fine as usual advisory uh, it was plugins only um that one, we had some plugins that were subject to the advisory. So it has been updated on CI Jenkins IO, which is public instance. Uh, already did the trusted and search CI updates. Um, I saw a pull request merge on our Docker Jenkins weekly image. That was done for that specific reason. I did the same during the past advisory two weeks ago. Uh, and the last one will be Jenkins-LTS to do. LTS remaining to deploy with the, um, the plugins advisory. For, for, so for specifically for Docker Jenkins weekly image, that will be both the weekly core release and the plugins update for the core advisory. 
So ideally, we should try to deploy it uh, later today. Um, is it okay, Stefan? Are you will you be able to do it after that meeting? Um, yes, yes. Sorry, okay. I, I was checking on the narrow on the on the no on problem. The weekly to to upgrade on the Kubernetes management, but that's not related. That's update CLI. Okay. Update done. So that's all for the security divisory. Do you have any other? Announcement, or do you have questions or things to add on the security advisory topic or announcement topic? Oh, cool. Uh, let's have a look at the upcoming calendar next weekly. 2.406 will happen 33 May. Um, as usual, I don't remember the next LTS. Uh, 2.401.1.401.1 release candidate tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, release in two weeks. Release in. Uh, which I think weeks. is 31 May. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. And Alexander Brandes is the release lead. Alex Fault is release lead. Cool. Right. So the okay, perfect. We add so security advisory. We had one today, announced yesterday. Mm -hmm. Plugins only. Uh, next major events. Do you have conferences, events, major elements in the upcoming weeks? Not in May that I recall. Okay. We we missed the one in, in Bruxelles that we received tickets from last year to this year, but they, they they told us today so it's too late for us, but they charge whatsoever. Uh, nice. So then let's start with the walk we were able to do uh, uh, during the past milestone. So we we had those minor fix-ups on weeklygenkinci.io. Uh, thanks, Alex, for taking care of that. So just a word, weekly CI Jenkins.io is a public demonstrator based on the weekly core release with some uh, SI UX uh, new language elements and some features. And it appears that some setup were done manually during the past months. So with the work currently being done by Hervé on migrating instances, we migrated weekly CI last week. And it appeared that uh, yeah, some elements were missing. So yeah, thanks, Alex. Alex uh, saw that and was able to contribute it back to Gcask configuration. So that should be OK. Is, that, is my assessment correct, uh, Hervé, or do you have other elements to add on this one? I still don't understand why we saw the HTML correctly rendered uh, last Friday as soon as we connected the LDAP to weekly. Ah, yeah. I don't, um, uh, I don't explain why. So, Mark, uh, that might be a security feature or a security accidental feature. Um, we forgot to open the firewall with the new outbound IP for the new instance. So it was re it was it had an error when connecting to LDAP, starting the security realm, mm -hmm. with connection error, mm -hmm. and the rendering of the top banner, the custom message written in HTML, was written as plain text. As soon as we fixed the LDAP part without a restart, then we started to show after the first login, again HTML was enabled again and visible and rendered as HTML. Huh. So the markup formatter configuration was somehow disrupted by the non the failure of the LDAP plugin to initialize. Yeah. That's but interesting. Something, something strange is you and not my fault uh, saw the HTML not rendered after that, and I don't understand why. Well, well, so so I okay. 
I am one of the causes of the manual configuration of that system, having done that manual configuration. And when I saw saw things were flawed, I went into the configure yeah, the Manage sure. Jenkins configure system page, and switch the html form the, the formatter from oh. no formatting to h yeah. valid html but what i don't understand is why saturday the html wasn't rendered why right. it was friday uh when we yeah and and that i truly don't know i i i agree Hervé. that uh -huh. is that is perplexing I don't think it's uh, really that important, but yeah, I was. Uh... That could be a mix of manual and automation that are cross boundaries, and it, we we might have the impression it's related to LDAP, but it might not. That might be another word right. accumulation, but yeah. We didn't do any manual configuration on Friday night, and yes, uh, it but you don't know if other did or did not as soon as the LDAP was working someone might have already be able to do it that could be team that could be could be mark, mark. could be all sorts of yes mm -hmm. i mean i i we, don't don't even think about that if i see it broken i'll go fix it it's yeah. like exactly we, uh, we, we all we have like that spirit and some oh yeah we, yeah but uh okay thanks that one was word um but yeah, so now it's fixed and Alex confirmed weekly is in current is in a current state we expect. So so that should be okay for us. Um close the issue about huge cloud cost due to outbound bandwidth. So it's been now three weeks and the metrics on Azure shows that the adding a S3 artifact manager uh, on CI Jenkins IO uh, clearly decrease the lots, the outbound bandwidth. We still have a bit, but it's clear it's it's way, way different and now it's sustainable. So I was able to cl close the issue. Um, we had someone blocked by the spam accounts. More and more, we have users that say they are blocked by the spam account. And all the every time, when you look in the logs in Datadog for the account tap, you see the reason is cookie because these persons tried to create an account in the past five or 15 minutes with the same web browser and they never logged out. So when they try to create a second account, there is already a cookie on account app which is detected by the backends and refused to avoid someone trying to batch create accounts on the same session. Each time we see that, it's a user who tried something, had an error, or did a typo in the email or that kind of thing. So I uh, created the issue, but I wanted to share that piece of knowledge with all you, all of you folks. A long-term solution will be getting rid of accounts, Jenkins IO application, and use something which is built for that key cloak or whatever application could that, but that's a long-term future. We have plenty of things to do right. until then. In short term, we could also remove this uh, spam cause from a contap and log when it's occur, when there is a cookie detection, but not block them. Mm. I don't or see a problem open. of keeping it. The current situation is fine. I mean, okay. uh, uh, for me, it's an indicator of people not reading uh, instruction properly. So, I mean, you cannot fight against that except using an application that has a, a user path, which is, way easier for them but in that case uh, i don't see i don't see a reason for finding a solution for people who mistype their email in a field okay uh, but maybe maybe i'm wrong it's just a proposal uh, uh, if you feel like it's a lot of spam account then yeah maybe we could start thinking but here most of the time whether they retry 24 hours later or, um, yeah, I, I had, I saw one user I discussed in 101, that's someone with web browser and tons of tabs and they never quit their web browser, which never end the session. So even trying 24 hours after, since there is no session cleanup, I thought that web browser had a TTL. So maybe our cookie doesn't have a time to leave. 
I don't know how it works uh, on the web browser side. That could be a solution, fixing the, the cookie detection by adding a time to leave of one or two hours for the session. Mm -hmm. Um, build aborting, Kate scaling down, that was a user error that has been fixed. Um, the, piece, the nuggets of knowledge here is when build plugin pipeline library method is used, by default, it has a fail fast parameter enabled, which means any failure on one of the branches will immediately stop all the other branches. Mm -hmm. And user can tune that, the parameter is exposed through the function, but that might lead to weird behavior like this, because here we have a, a pipeline specialist or a Jenkins eye expert, and even that expert was coked on that trap. So just be aware, build plugin fails fast. So if you have a fail on one of the branches, that kills the whole build. That makes sense on infrastructure point of view, of course, because we don't consume, we don't want to consume too much machine time. Uh, RV, so you finished the task add launchable to agent and you were able to update the pipeline library. Um, is that correct? And are there other tasks or feedback about that topic? We have to open uh, an issue on their uh, repository to tell them my app issues uh, when using nano server image but nothing on our side. OK, so, uh, yeah. okay. so the login errors due to that, but yeah. OK, cool. So does that mean that uh, everything has been handed over to Basil explicitly, and Basil is uh, confirmed that he's now doing whatever he, he does? Is that correct? I haven't seen. Uh, uh confirmation in return but uh, yeah i told him that it was ready on our side cool thanks uh account issue so i'm, I'm passing it temporary name resolution failure and plugin bomb builds so that one i took on me to close it uh, because the work you did, folks, last week allowed to remove that error. I haven't seen that error anymore on bomb builds. We haven't fixed we haven't fixed the root cause issue, but now it's not present anymore. It's okay. Um, the, the the root cause is the core DNS uh, uh, components, the local DNS server inside the CI Kate cluster on AWS was either having too much issues or had temporary failure to resolve outside domain names. Um, we were able to track that the Datadog agent on that cluster were absolutely, uh, I don't know the English word, but they were sending a lot of requests to core DNS. And because our Datadog agent were trying all of our services as part of the Datadog probes, that's the historical system. So uh, Hervé um, uh, worked on this part and was able to disable the Datadog. As a team, we discussed that topic. And we decided that the clusters where CI Jenkins IO runs build should not have Datadog probes for our services. Yeah. Particularly since the past two years, Datadog introduced something named Synthetix that allow Datadog to run their own probes on their own system. You can select regions, and cloud provider on different locations in the world. So there is uh, less good reasons for us to run our own probes and consuming CPU on networks. So by removing the Datadog agent uh, custom probes, we were able to decrease the load on core DNS. That's why the issue is not there anymore. Uh, if the issue happen again, then we will have to deep dive on the core DNS component because we saw where the error, but but this error did not appear on each time. So that was, yeah. So the, where? The, we had previously been installing the Datadog agent on every, uh, every pod or every container that we were starting inside the, the Kubernetes cluster as a ci.jenkins.io agent. Machines. 
the on data machines, agent, but only uh, only at the machine level, not at every exactly. container. Interesting. Exactly. Okay. And and it was and that was making enough each machine that set of all machines. So in the case of bomb, that could be a hundred or more machines, right? It could be very large, but they were enough okay. to overwhelm the DNS. Interesting. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, another account issue: uh, disk space for system pool. That one was a tricky one. <laughs> So uh, as pointed by Stefan a few weeks ago, um, after the work that, after the cl initial cleanup work on Datadog that Hervé did, we had some uh, monitor that were alerting us that we, we, we passed the 80% threshold of disk usage. That threshold is important on Linux because it means your performances are decreasing. Even with the SSD, uh, most of the time you need 20% 20, 20 free on your disk, at least. Uh, for the system pool on that cluster, that was a weird because that's the default system pool. And when using Terraform or Azure, if you change the default system pool, it won't to recreate a cluster because the, the life cycle is tied. However, we were able to find a trick solution by creating a secondary system pool draining everything, then removing the old one, everything could have was done manually, either through Azure command line or UI. And at the end, if you change uh, only the naming on Terraform, Terraform is tricked into thinking the current uh, system pool, which is the first one on the list of system pool is the default one. And it, just like this, it goes. So we were able to increase the disk space for system pool. And with deep dive, we don't pay more for these disks because we have set up ephemeral machines. So we use now all the available ephemeral storage for the OS disk. In the context of Kubernetes, the OS disk does not survive a virtual machine restart or reschedule, but we don't care because that's Kubernetes with auto scaling. So that's why we use that one. Um, Jenkins CI failing for Jenkins plugin after changes in Jenkins file. I don't remember this one, but it's closed. I think user had issues. Okay, the, the user was um, opening pull request and committing with a GitHub username and Git username different than one of the maintainers. So for, of course, if they were trying to change the Jenkins file, our security policy on CI Jenkins IO did not take in account the pull request modify Jenkins file because the user was seen as untrusted. And the user tried to open the pull request with his GitHub account name, but the commit was still with his former Git's username. So same issue because Jenkins does deep dive inspection at the commit level for the uh, authors. So that's good. That means the mechanism still works as expected. <laughs> that's a positive sign. Another account issue is wrong email. Apitol's account, so we have a plugin maintainer. We did a bit more than expected uh, for the infrascope, but we helped that user to get access uh, and to be able to release their, um, their plugin. Uh, the trick here is that Applitools is a is an old plugin and that hasn't been updated since years. And the associated technical account was part of the, th there was a security issue mark in 2020 before I joined. And a lot of LDAP accounts that were marked as uh, unused since months or years were disabled on key clock and LDAP sites. And so the consequences of that were still there. That was creating a set of minor issues and also the user wanted to do a manual release of the plugin. So that's not the best idea. They had issues with configuring their Maven. And alas for them, they were uh, uh, essential in discovering that Artifactory UI changed. Thanks Bruno, thanks Mark for taking care of that. Our documentation on Jenkins IO for developer need to be updated as soon as possible, at least removing the UI steps for now. And we need to discuss with Gfrog because you cannot get the Maven configuration settings file through the UI. You must use the curl command line. 
that's the takeaway. So Mark, we have to take appointment with Gifrog to discuss that with them as uh, already discussed together. Uh, because if we have that issue, I let let I let let that sink in. If Gfrog asks us to enable authentication for anyone using Artifactory, <laughs> that will be a nightmare for us in terms of support. <laughs> Well, I, I I had missed, but I think you're correct. We need to change the page on Jenkins.io to acknowledge that the UI instructions as listed no longer work. You must use this this other step. Um, yep. It's a valid point. The goal is avoid confusion for now, and then we can iterate once we have found the solution. Dropping a note will mean, hey, we used to do it with the UI. It's currently broken on Artifactory. Uh, that might come soon. A note like this. Um, so everyone know you have to use command line and go. Uh, thanks, survey. Looks like uh, you you didn't have any issue on migrating the, the bots application from system pool to Linux pool. Nothing to report on that one? No. Good. OK. So the goal is to move our application workload on non-system pools, because we want to have as less things as possible. Um, we had issue with the credential for Artifactory Maven. Uh, I'm asking for a counter review on repository permission updater, the Jenkins file. I want, I've opened a pull request a few months ago. Uh, there isn't a clear consensus, but my proposal is to do at least one retry when the job fails, because the, jo the, the job run every four or six hours. So if the job fails and no one notice and trigger a new one, that mean we reach the automatic CD tokens for Artifactory, they reach their end of life during one to three hours leading to that kind of issues. We have one some time to time. Most of the time it's okay, but my proposal is to do only one retry. Um, Daniel did not really object it, but said it would be better to have this built in inside the RPU system because most of the time it fails because uh, GitHub being uh, in holidays like last week. <laughs> uh, it's just, Ah, I don't have the bandwidth and the knowledge to do it built in inside the RPU uh, Java application. So right now I propose we had the retry with a command in the Jenkins file for us avoiding that kind of support. If it fails two times on the, in a row, then it means there is an issue and then it's monitoring part. And if anyone is interested in contributing that natively inside the application, please do help us. And finally, um, that one was tricky. I took that uh, with Maven free, being able to specify a Maven repository for artifact that is local was forbidden or deprecated. It appears I was mistaken. So the whole time when we built and specified the ACP system, uh, I, I did not even talk about that case, but it appears we have it. So Maven free officially you can specify a local uh, file pass URL to a local repository, and it's added in a list. And of course, it works like every other artifact repositories, meaning by default, it was proxied by ACP. So the user are at their build failing. So the idea was to define uh, an ID, a technical ID. Uh, so thanks for the help on that part. Uh, we should now document this one, but if you you need a local repository with files, you need to use the specific ID that is excluded from ACP on our system. Any question points on that one? Okay, uh, we had one issue closed as not planned. Someone asked for a password reset and then never answered back. Usually people mixing our infrastructure with their own Jenkins. That happened. Now, back to work in progress. Uh, install and configure Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO. So just a note, we didn't um, discuss about this one last week. That appeared during the week, but that's a, 
a really nice idea from Hervé because um, that will allow us to monitor a lot of things on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, we are not using Datadog on CI Jenkins IO for the specific uh, Jenkins metrics. We use to have the Prometheus and plugin metrics. We need to check these plugins have been removed because we removed the, data, the Prometheus platform. And now um, we saw on Infra CI that the data in Datadog when sent by the native plugin are really useful and provide additional information for us in terms of observability of Jenkins. That could help on numerous topics, including the BOM uh, slowness, the fact that we cannot have 300 BOM parallel steps at the same time, otherwise here Jenkins IO just dies for one hour, uh, but other topics. So that's why we have added that uh, as part of the milestone because it's essential for us to observe that. Hervé, your turn. What's the status of that task? Uh, it's not working. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> Fair. Well, um, the data dog agent is running on the host while the controller is running inside the Docker container. So we have to. Network, Find my friend. Yeah. Uh, okay. To let them communicate. Controller, data dog agent, network connection. Um, is if you need help on that part please ask uh, on our usual channels. Um, but yeah, it's in the good direction because you already set up the, the world Jenkins configuration as code. That's opt-in, only enable for CI. We don't enable it for trusted and search. So that's really a, a lot of work and working work. We don't want to send data from within the cert and trusted controllers, but we want for CI Jenkins IO. Uh, so that's nice work. Let's continue on this one. Is it okay for you to keep working on that on the upcoming milestone, Hervé? Yes, yeah, sure. Cool. Uh, I might provide help and ideas either on the network or socket part. Um, yes, that you did the hard the the hard work. It's only a matter of finding the right network path. So that's not a lot of config, and there is no blocker here from my point of view. So nice work, and let's continue. Uh, CI Jenkins IO use a new VM instance type. So the new virtual machine and its environment has been created earlier today, currently working on uh, running Puppet Agent. So the goal is to have a generation two virtual machine that costs a bit less than the current one with better CPU performances um, and better system disk performances. Uh, we'll see if that one helps on the BOM area there might be issues due to the HDD system and the OS disk not being uh, healthy on the current CI Jenkins IO machine. Under the hood, it's also a way to have CI Jenkins IO migrated to Ubuntu 22.04. And on the same network as the ACP and the new cluster that Hervé worked and is working on. So closer network, less latency, uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of improvements. Uh, I expect continue working on this one and being able to plan migration uh, either on the upcoming milestone or in two weeks maximum. Quite optimistic on that part. That will require an interruption on CI Jenkins IO uh, for, doing the, for doing the whole migration, but that will be one hour no more, no less. Stefan, you handed that task over to me for the upcoming yes. milestone, but may I ask you to give me a status report because I haven't done a lot on that since the end over. So you are yeah, the most up to date yeah. person on trusted to Azure. No, you should be as, as well as I am because I did the end over, so I told you, but I will I will update everyone. Uh, we are at the point where we got the three VM we got the networks with that subnet. We got the um, 
security uh, rules Group. between groups and and uh, and uh, opening for the um, for the ports. Uh, so everything should be ready to get the Puppet uh, installation for the software. Uh, we should be at that po at that point, meaning installing with Puppet all the tools, and then uh, going through the the migration by itself with the data to um, process process. Get agent run, validate, and start data migration. Yeah, I'm sorry I gave you the baby because I'm on holidays. So on my side, I, val I validated I validated almost all the security groups rules. Um, the Puppet configuration is uh, ready to roll. So adding the free machines inside the Puppet um, list of machines. So we should be able later today or tomorrow to start the first initial puppet run. Uh, if it works, then I'm waiting for finishing the security rules before starting the initial migration of data. Uh, Jenkins home and the permanent agent. Um, the tricky part will be to find a way to test the update center generation. I might do it manually on the new machines because I don't want the update center to be uploaded to the machine until the last minute to avoid having both instances. But on the other hand, we, that will need, require um, interruption of service on trusted CI to be sure that we fully generate any elements because we might need to open firewall rules or change outbound IPs on the machine such as update center. So for sure, there will be some hiccups uh, after the final migration. uh because holidays uh that was that one is prior like ci jenkins sayo thanks stefan for the work and the updates you're welcome thank you to take over uh as you're billing excessive consumption on east us so these are the virtual machine agents uh we change the kind of instance and the setup thanks folks for helping me and reviewing on that area uh, the, I checked yesterday, the billing seems to decrease a lot. We are using spot instances of a kind of instances which is 10 times cheaper in spot. So clearly it's worth the effort. Um, there might be hiccups, especially with for the Jenkins core or long running builds, if they have too much agent disconnections. I saw some, but I cannot evaluate if it's a lot, if it's blocking, annoying, slowing or if it's working as expected. Uh, we should wait one or two weeks before seeing a real impact on the billing. Uh, we have solution if the spot instances are breaking either acceptance test or NES or the other kind. We could have different sets of virtual machines. The cost in any case is cheaper. We were able to remove the elements. There is an improvement though uh, with the work of Team Yacomb, uh, we should be able to quickly use inbound agent mode for these machines instead of SSH. That will clearly increase the stability if we have spot instances, because the time for detection by Jenkins clearly is shorter when the inbound agent drops the connection. And that's because, because Jenkins isn't detecting the loss of connection, whereas the inbound agent somehow does notify on loss of connection, on death of the machine. I'm interested. It, it does in both cases, but in the case of SSH, the inbound protocol is mixed inside the SSH protocol. Jenkins communicate to the, with the agent with a, a net a SSH client, which is a Java native SSH client. And the setup of both TCP and SSH on that implementation has a keep alive that is a way longer. So it takes way more time to detect. That's the, the classical uh, agent disconnected and did not reconnect it properly. Um, also, I don't want to work too much on the network there now because we need to migrate CI Jenkins IO to the new network and its agent to the new network and assess the network performances once this will be done and stable. 
because right now we are operating these elements inside a network which has IP overlaps, which is a nightmare to maintain. That's the reason. Uh, Stéphane, could you give us an update on the Azure RM64 virtual machines, please? Yes, for the, the infra part, it's, um, it's uh, running quite well. I did switch the default um, VM used by the Packer building process, and it's now using that IRM64 machine. So we, we should save some money on that because it's cheaper. And I also uh, set up um, uh, an instance, an agent uh, IRM64 Azure VM on CI Jenkins IO with the same image and everything. So uh, we uh, we are ready to to try to use it as much as possible to save some some cash. I am still working on a little tiny thing with uh, update CLI, trying to check that uh, the the image is, is within the gallery of Azure before offering to upgrade the gallery number for Windows. But uh, I'm working on it. Okay. Not Windows 4, sorry, for this one, IRM64. So that issue is scoped to infra CI, am I correct? Yes. Given but... the title. So is it closable from your point of view? Not yet, not yet, because of that little box on the please? top. Of the update CLI, I'm I'm trying to okay. finish that today. I'm sorry it took take no, more time than I no thought. No problem. Is there another issue for uh, tracking RM64 on CI Jenkins IO? Not quite sure. I don't think. Okay, I will take care because the the final step for CI Jenkins IO, if we had such an issue, would be to definitively remove AWS RM64 virtual machines. Yeah. We should even be able to clean up any EC2 configuration from CI Jenkins. Oh, oh, oh uh, wondering if it's not done. I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure. Okay, if it's okay for you, we'll take care of either creating or updating existing issue and do the check since you will be in holidays. Is that okay for you? It's it's perfect. Thank you so much. My memory is not quite sure. Okay. One last mile, update CLI before closure. Okay. Update du portal to check issue and refresh status. Okay, cool. Uh, next major task is migrating um, our Kubernetes public workload to the new cluster in the new network public uh, gates. Uh, Takeaway one we will pay less money with that new cluster. Takeaway two, we will have a non-overlap network with better performances. Takeaway three, that cluster is IPv6 compliant. So we should be able to, um, to publish our services running on this cluster on IPv6 for our Indian friends. Hervé, what's the status and did I miss something? Uh, the status it's in progress. Uh, you didn't miss anything. Uh, currently having uh, stateless services. Uh, it's, uh, it's also a great way to to remember how the services uh, are running and uh, what uh, what they need and uh, the different dependencies like uh, PostgreSQL database and etc. Okay. So, so it will also uh, a way to do some uh, cleanup slash uh, import of uh, Jenkins data your uh, DNS records, which are or most of them not as good yet. Okay. Uh, let me know when you want to focus on the PostgreSQL, but I assume you have already the stateless ones. Um, about DNS record, just a reminder, don't forget to set up, if not already known, the DNS TTL to the minimum value possible before the migrations.
the goal is if we need a rollback, we don't want to wait 10 minutes for the rollback to be effective for everyone. Migration, ideally do it 24 hours before a DNS record change. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Yes. Um, a word on the PostgreSQL. Right now we have, the, let's say three services uh, that are using a PostgreSQL database. We tried a lot of things, but it appeared that we will need to create a new uh, instance on the new network. And for uh, instance migration for these three, we will have to dump, stop the, ser stop the service, dump the database, import on the new service, start the service from the new cluster. That's what uh, Stefan worked on with report Jenkins IO uh, a few months ago when we migrated it from, and same for Keycloak, when we migrated them from AWS to Azure. So we will have a service stopped, but that's okay if we just do the announcement properly. We can start with Keycloak because the only person impacted by Keycloak will be us. So Hervé, you should be able to do it uh, uh, without further announcement. Just let us know at least one hour before uh, as an internal uh, synchronization. But also you discovered uh, some services are using separated databases that in any case will need to be migrated because they were using the, let's say the, in, the legacy PostgreSQL managed service in Azure. So we might need to create first the new instance on the new network and migrate as well these instances so we can clean up former services. Another uh, questions we might have is uh, upgrade uh, for Azure Bucket from V1 to V2. Not sure yet of uh, what's the pro cons and uh, the cost related to that, mm -hmm. but it was proposed in in uh, Azure Portal when looking yep. at uh, their settings. Uh, may I ask you to open an issue describing this? We might have a few where the question stands, a few buckets for which the question stands. Um, it's not mandatory for the migration as far as I can tell, but I might yeah, be sure wrong. No. Just, just wanted uh, to be sure because that yeah. uh, I might have missed an it's element there. It's okay. Is that okay for you to open an issue describing this? So then we can have the discussion for the cost or understanding there, and we might add a team on the discussion thread. He might have insight on that part. Um, that might have an impact. I don't know if it's positive, negative, or none on the way Kubernetes cluster are mounting the PVCs using a virtual version one and version two. I'm almost sure that, for instance, if you want to use NFS instead of the default Samba mounting for buckets, you need a version two. Version one does not support presenting the blob storage to virtual machines as a NFS mount. That's one of the impact I'm 100% sure that I saw that on the NFS status. That's a requirement, you need a version two. Uh, let me write this down. Uh, so uh, version two, version one for bucket storage should to be created. Good catch, thanks, Hervé. Uh, Stefan, you opened an issue about the leftover disk to clean up on digital ocean, which name start by PVC dash something. Yes, so, I just opened the issue, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't know what that PVC was used for. Uh, that could be uh, something back from experiment from either Hervé or Hai uh, for the ACP DOKS public cluster or someone, uh, another, uh, another one. Uh, I propose Hervé, if you're okay, we should check during the upcoming days together. We take a coffee, we look at the the state, and if we don't know, we can just delete it because there isn't any sensitive data in digital ocean yet. Good for you. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, digital ocean virtual machine agent instead of container agent. Stefan, Hervé, can I ask you to co-present the what is that task about and 
What is the status? I, I will start because I, I, I did the first step. I am I struggle with um, Pecker to uh, be able to build some uh, image for digital ocean to be used as uh, image template image for uh, VM that we will we would spawn uh, as agent Jenkins agent from the controllers. I did manage to have uh, um, a nice uh, image on uh, Intel AMD AMD uh, and I pushed my code on uh, online uh, I built one image so now I'm giving the the baby back to Hervé to play around with the plugin of uh, uh, Jenkins to spawn the actual VM anything to add not from my side okay so they explain on the issue the, the idea is to uh, stop using Kubernetes agent on DigitalOcean because it cannot auto scale to zero and we cannot control at low level uh, the, um, the outbound security groups. We cannot forbid SSH outbound, for instance. So both of them are major reasons for us to switch to virtual machines. This is what Gavin Morgan hinted us to do at the beginning of the partnership almost two years ago. So we are back to that initial assessment that might be better, at, at least for the billing. Uh, so that's why we started these elements. The limitation is that we only have Linux uh, Intel AMD machine. We don't have IRM Linux and we don't have Windows machines on DigitalOcean. But still that could help, especially with the spot, non-spot uh, issue we mentioned earlier about the virtual machine agent on CI Jenkins. Any question or anything to add on that part? Cool, thanks. Um, Hervé, could you describe the next issue about cleanup and import and manage Datadog monitoring in Terraform? So there was uh, some monitors uh, created uh, in uh, 2016. Uh, which later has been has been duplicated uh, as code in the Datadog Terraform repository, and there was also some leftover uh, uh, like uh, a Confluence slowness uh, monitor and uh, two update center uh, jobs on CI Jenkins.io monitors. Uh, so I've I've removed uh, the duplicated uh, monitors, and uh, for the for the update center jobs, we have to come up with uh, an alternative solution, as we don't want to install and to open trusted ci.jenkins.io where these jobs are running. But instead, uh, adding uh, the creation of uh, a file somewhere in a public place from these jobs, so we can monitor and, and observe these uh, jobs. Uh, uh, these jobs without uh, opening access on trusted. To be found. Or monitoring trusty.cs job update center as we do not want to use Datadog inside the controller itself. Cool, that was a lot of cleanup and work. Thanks, uh, there are Ray. still some, yeah, there are still yeah. some groups running uh, from the puppet uh, also declared declared on the in the puppet repository but uh, the, the probs you mean? don't need uh, the docker data dogs image is there the same probs that were defined in docker data dog are also defined in the puppet repository yes for good reasons it's because we need both 
we need the, the probes need to be on all the infrastructure on each machine. Each machine means virtual machines are managed by puppets. So that's why you have to define them on puppet. And some machines are Kubernetes nodes on the node pool. So for that, you need a daemon set with the Elm chart datadog. That's why you have a duplication of the probes. So there is th that's a good reason. And uh, the question is more, do we need custom probes? That's more the real question. Most of these probes could be replaced by your synthetics as for today, which means dele fully delegating all that things to, uh, uh, to Datadog. But the choice of having them on Kubernetes, virtual machine, or both is, is not really an interesting question. If we need them, then we install them everywhere. The goal is to have multiple data points. That's, that's statistics. Thanks. Artifact caching proxies and reliable. I haven't had time to work. No, I, I worked a bit on the inbound agent part. The goal is to move agent on a closer network of the ACP on Azure. That would uh, solve the issue because DNS is now served and digital ocean is not used by the bomb anymore. So we should be able to leverage the limits of the ACP behavior. So the next step is uh, checking again that issue once the agent will be on a closer network. I intend to work on that uh, on the upcoming weeks. Now we have validated that inbound agent are working as expected. So all of these issues should be worked on. That's already a lot. I just want to quickly cover a few new issues that are marked as triage. Is it okay for everyone or I propose in, I keep them as triage. We just read the title and see if they are mandatory or if we can postpone triage to next week. Is that okay for you? So IRM64 not pull on public gate to start using IRM64 pods. Uh, we differ that because Stefan is going to be in uh, holidays and this targets the stateless services that Hervé mentioned is currently starting to migrate to the new cluster. So that means that uh, Stefan, you weren't fast enough. So now you have to wait for the migration to be complete. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slow, I know. So I will postpone this one. I let it as tray edge. The goal is you can, in any case, you can start creating the node pool, but you won't be able to migrate the services until the migration is fully finished for these services. Looks good for you. Just a reminder, the idea is that some of our services, such as Javadoc, are just a web server that serve file from file system. So there is an opportunity here to run these services on machines that are based on ARM64 instead of Intel because we use Nginx or Apache that exist on both APU architectures that have uh, good performances on both. But the costs is clearly cheaper when using RM64. It consumes less energy and costs less. So that's a good thing for, numer for numerous reasons. And the proposal to use them on node pools. And the interest for us is to start managing RM64 node pool on Kubernetes that could be useful for our builds as well in the future. Upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25. That one is required to finish Ubuntu 22.04 campaign because that's the only way to migrate to Ubuntu for the Kubernetes nodes on Azure. Um, I would like to, to drive uh, this upgrade. The, pre the previous upgrade were driven by either Hervé or Stefan or both, but I'm interested in driving this one just because I just uh, just uh, something I want. There is nothing hidden there. Well, and that, that will be our gift to you. That, that upgrade campaign is part of getting us eventually off of Ubuntu 18, right? Because we've got one or two that are still running 18. Exactly. Great. We don't have a lot of choice on Azure. If you have Kubernetes uh, up to uh, 1.24, you will have Ubuntu 18 below. It's a custom kernel, custom enforcing, so the security issues are backported by Azure. But still, I would prefer having Ubuntu 22, especially with the control groups behaviors. 
because the new Ubuntu features a new control group major operation. So my proposal is to add this to the upcoming milestone. I want to start reading the change log and sharing on that area and preparing the issue. Um, next one is uh, uh, missing adopt this plugin topic on maintainer. That one does not have any triage or milestone that has been opened for discussion by Adrien. Uh, it's already, yeah, so. Uh... So it's already a pull request uh, from Daniel. Oh, Since, cool. Uh, one year. Right. It's, there's a blocking issue that has to be resolved before we could proceed with that. Daniel's got the, the approach. And... So any objection on we keep that issue there because it's a convenient way to discuss. There is no expected action from the infrastructure though. So that's why maybe it should move somewhere else i'm not really sure what are your thoughts about have. that issue yeah. either yeah. let it there or move it to the repository function updater but we can let it there without any oh milestone. good idea good idea it's, it's related to the rpu on the plugin side too so mm. Yeah, so maybe having the wrapper issue here is still good because it's about two different repositories. We don't have a convenient way to use the equivalent of what is an epic on Jira. That issue will be an epic. GitHub project does not allow that in an easy way because that adds an additional full component on top of that. So that's why. For, it's okay. It's not on a milestone, so we don't have any actionable here, and still it's on the discussion area. Digital leftover this to clean up, so that one is part of our milestone, so that's okay. We can remove triage after this meeting. Oh, remove Docker Hub pool credential for Kubernetes cluster. The work from Hervé on Datadog showed that now Datadog was the last component requiring a credential for pooling on Kubernetes cluster, and it doesn't anymore because they defaulted to gcr.io uh, registry. They still provide an image on Docker Hub and you can shift it, but that's not the default. So that means we should be able to clean up some code. I won't and I don't have the willingness to work on that task for the upcoming milestone. So I propose to keep it as dry edge unless someone feels it's important or is really interested in working on it. I don't mind either. Digital Ocean Virtual Machine Agent, okay. A pod garbage collector to a Jenkins Kubernetes cluster. That one is uh, an answer to the concern from our friends at CloudBees who are paying for our AWS accounts, and they were concerned about if we increase the maximum limits for the bomb builds of available resources, we and we don't take care of cleaning up uh, pods that could st still be running. That's what happened with the virtual machine on March. So we cannot say it will never happen for the pods as well. So that's why that one will be a safety concern uh, by adding I propose different solution on the issue, but the process that will delete at least once a day all the remaining pods, because we don't have any kind of usage on AWS that should take a pod up and running more than six to eight hours. So yeah, if we remove all the pods that are detected as more than one day hold, then it's okay and we should never uh, have any problem then. I think we can postpone this one in two milestone. Is that okay for all of you? Because it will be only mandatory once we will start going back to the bomb builds using bigger machines. And I think that's all. Do you have other issues that I could have missed that should go on the upcoming milestone or that you want to raise now? None for me. Stefan, are everything good for you? No. No. Everything is perfect. Cool. So I'm stopping the screen share. So I'm going to stop the recording. See you next week for people watching us.